Secret number six, Hideaki Anno. Although Hayao Miyazaki can be credited for conceiving what eventually became known as Nadia, the real talent behind the show is Hideaki Anno, one of the co-founders of the Japanese animation studio, Gainax. Anno was born in the Yamaguchi Prefecture of Japan on May 22, 1960. When he was 14, Anno saw the Japanese TV series Space Battleship Yamato, which left a lasting impact on him as an aspiring filmmaker. At the age of 24, Anno was a key animator on Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. During production, Anno's desk was so littered with comic books, magazines, and other reference materials that Miyazaki wondered how Anno would be able to clean up after the film was finished. Many elements of Anno's personal life are incorporated into his work, including constant fear, vegetarianism, shyness, and his troubled relationship with his father. He is said to have created the protagonists for The Secret of Blue Water, the ever-optimistic, kind-hearted inventor John, and the suspicious, eccentric circus performer Nadia, based on his light and dark sides. Working on the show proved to be a nightmare for Anno. Tight production schedules caused a lot of stress for the director, even more so because he had almost no creative control on the show. The resulting turmoil led to four years of depression for Anno. Somewhere during this period, he created what would be his most personal work, described as an attempt to put his feelings, passions, and troubles onto film. The resulting show, Neon Genesis Evangelion, was arguably his biggest success and the work that Japanese animation fans mostly remember him for today. His and Her Circumstances was his last animated show as a director. Anno temporarily withdrew from animation to concentrate on experimental live-action movies, such as 1998's Love and Pop, Shikijitsu in 2000, and Cutie Honey in 2004. Recently, however, Anno has made a comeback with his Rebirth of Evangelion Movies, a tetralogy that retells his controversial saga, charting the story in different directions. Like Nadia, Anno's future is uncertain, but one can be sure that he will continue to seek ways to express himself visually and mentally in any new project he tackles. Secret number seven, Gynax. As any fan of Japanese animation can tell you, lots of studios in the land of the rising sun have created noteworthy titles that catapulted them into success. But in the case of Gynax, Nadia was the company's first major entry to be recognized by more than just fans. Gainax was founded by a group of fanboy animators in December of 1984. Their first project, the expensive, ambitious sci-fi tale Royal Space Force Wings of Oniamis, premiered in Japanese theaters three years later. The film, which was directed by Gainax's co-founder, 24-year-old Hiroyuki Yamaga, opened both critics' and audiences' eyes to the artistry and imagination of the budding animation studio. This was followed by Aim for the Top Gunbuster, a six-part direct-to-video anime series directed by Anno, which also won considerable acclaim for its energy and style. Nadia followed soon after, and proved to be the company's introduction in creating television serials. Since Nadia, the studio has produced several series for video and TV, which have fascinated anime buffs worldwide, including Otaku no Video, his and her circumstances, Furikuri, and Maharomatic. But as mentioned, Gainax's most popular work is the 26-part TV series Neon Genesis Evangelion. Its success spawned a tidal wave of merchandise as well as two theatrical movies. The company has also produced video games, most of which are available only in Japan. Regardless of what Gainax continues to produce, the studio will always be remembered for its achievements in animation, Nadia included. Yes.
Secret number eight, the infamous island episodes. Nadia was originally intended to have an estimated 27 episodes. However, when it became so popular in Japan, NHK requested that Gainax produce more episodes, extending the episode count to 39. Neither the studio nor Anno were ecstatic. As mentioned, Gainax was already experiencing trouble keeping the show on schedule and meeting their sponsors' demands. Anno was unable to handle the burden of doing an extra season for a TV show he had little to no creative control over. So he turned direction over to his assistant, Shinji Higuchi, for episodes 23 through 34. Furthermore, to cut down on costs, the budget was already spiraling out of control, other studios in Japan and Korea were commissioned to produce the 12 new episodes. The results proved to be disastrous, both artistically and for the reputation of the show. During this filler sequence, known by fans as the infamous Island episodes, the animation varied wildly in quality, and the stories for each of these episodes veered the show dramatically off course. What was once a compelling, intriguing sci-fi mystery had turned into something slapstick, offbeat, and very out of place. Characters were becoming caricatures of themselves, or in some cases, inexplicably regressing, losing most, if not all, of the development they had established throughout 22 prior episodes. Instead of adventures around the world or under the sea, John, Nadia, and their friends were routed through all sorts of bizarre, wacky situations. Simply put, all of this was nothing like viewers had come to expect from Nadia. The overall nature of the filler sequence seemed more like a Looney Tunes cartoon instead of a Jules Verne-inspired serial. At one point, John's actions seemed more like Wile E. Coyote, not a curious, intelligent adventurer. <laughs> Nadia took hits from critics and fans because of these filler episodes. Only by episodes 35 through 39, which Anno had been concentrating on during all this turmoil, would the show return to its initial roots wherein lay its appeal. But even by then, the damage was done for many fans. Even Anno agrees that Nadia would have been improved drastically if these fillers were removed. In fact, the only episode he would have saved was the 31st, Farewell Red Noah, and to a lesser extent parts of episode 30, Labyrinth in the Earth. Unlike most of the aforementioned fillers, these were the only episodes to provide any actual meat to the story. Because of all this, Gainax has never made another series as long as Nadia. Had the show been produced at its intended episode count, who knows what could have been? Like the title character's murky past, this question remains a mystery. However, Anno did produce a compiled release of Nadia known as the Nautilus Story, which aimed to focus mainly on the show's major plot point, the struggle between Captain Nemo and his ruthless arch-enemy Gargoyle. Released only on video and Laserdisc in Japan, this version pairs the 39-episode show down to 6 hours, eliminating all but 15 minutes of the filler sequence. Unfortunately, many of the show's other important episodes are also shortened and or cut from the compilation. John's Japanese voice actress, Noriko Hidaka, recorded narration to bridge the missing pieces together. Fans disenchanted with the shipwreck the show's second half turned out to be have often requested Anno to remake Nadia, but this was as close as he ever got. Secret number 9, Nadia and Evangelion. Several episodes of Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water, include references to Bible stories and religion, such as the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, 
Adam and Eve, the genesis of our world, and the Tower of Babel. Similar elements can be found in another Gynax production, Neon Genesis Evangelion. In this post-apocalyptic tale about three children piloting robotic giants to save their world from monstrous invaders, Christianity and Western religion were used rather extensively. For instance, there were tense action sequences culminating with explosions in cruciform patterns. Much of these references owe to director Hideaki Anno's own readings in Jungian psychology and archetypes. In fact, it is interesting to note how alike Nadia and Evangelion are, stylistically, artistically, and emotionally. Both shows feature character designs by Yoshiyuki Sadamoto. They were also scored by composer Shiro Sagisu, and Anno, as mentioned, served as director. The visual design of shy, introverted protagonist Shinji Ikari has even been described by Sadamoto as Nadia with a masculine makeover. Most of the other characters in Evangelion bear some striking resemblances to their blue water counterparts. If the lead characters of Nadia were based on Anno's light and dark sides, then this show's children triumvirate, heroes, Shinji, fiery-tempered Asuka Langley Soryu, and eccentric Rei Ayanami all represented Anno's personality in general. To this day, there are numerous discussions of how both shows compare, but that is another story. Secret number 10, Nadia the Motion Picture. In spite of Nadia's tumultuous production period, it still delivered a satisfying conclusion. But two years after its first run on Japanese television, distributor Toho decided to produce a full-length movie to cash in on Nadia's popularity. The result, infamously known as Nadia the Secret of Fuzzy, or Nadia the Motion Picture Worldwide, was a 90-minute feature with no involvement from Gynax nor Anno. In fact, their only contribution to the project was recycled footage from the series which made up a third of the film. The remaining hour was an original story set three years after the events of The Secret of Blue Water. Unfortunately, this new tale was both contrived and inconsistent with all that had happened in the original show. Furthermore, the animation suffered from the same inferior, cheap and rushed quality as the Island Africa episodes which almost sank the show. As with that sequence, both critics and fans reacted negatively to the movie. Unsurprisingly, Nadia the motion picture is seldom mentioned today. In the midst of all this creative disaster, Gynax had initially been hired to work on the film by now-defunct Japanese animation company Group TAC, who had funded the project. While Gynax contributed to the main plot and additional characters, in the words of Yasuhiro Takeda from the Notenki Memoirs, at the actual production phase, things just weren't happening. Things continued to worsen, until finally we had to just apologize and tell Group TAC that we couldn't do it. What Gynax did gain from the doomed project, however, was an advance payment of 50 million yen, half a million dollars, to help recoup the losses they suffered from working on the show. It wouldn't even be until years later after the success of Neon Genesis Evangelion that Gynax would finally pay their debts to TAC. Luckily, writes Takeda, TAC were willing to overlook the cost of Sadamoto's character designs and the editing of all that television footage. We gladly pocketed the savings and returned them the rest. In short, Nadia was a series of ups and downs, and continues to receive criticism for its faults. But it still remains a favorite of many anime fans from the 1990s. Its core storyline, colorful characters, and mixture of Jules Verne Marvel with steampunk adventure continuing to outshine such drawbacks and captivate newcomers.
And so our adventure comes to an end as we return to our ship and set sail for home. We hope we answered many of your questions and expanded your insights about Nadia, the secret of blue water. Much of the information you've been listening to has been taken from various sources, including Yasuhiro Takeda's Notenki Memoirs, published in America by ADV Manga, and available to read online at www.gwern.net slash docs slash 2002-notenki-memoirs, the folks at avageeks.org, avaotaku.com, the Most Holy Gynax Cult at sleepisfortheweek.org, wikipedia.org, khara.co.jp, and finally, Dr. Mark Hairston, a longtime Nadia fan for his extensive article about both the show and its dub in the November 2001 edition of the magazine An America. I'm John Turner. Thanks for listening. <laughs>